Yeah, okay, so here we are. I hope that this is working for you. Um, so this is going to be exciting. Welcome to my apartment. Uh, I'm just strolling around. Oh, hey, let's, let's look down over here. We've got a Kiska on the floor, plus some toilet paper and cat cleaner. Good. So I'm going to come over here. I think everything should be working. Can you guys see me? Hello! I'll, I'll, yeah, there we go. <laughs> now you guys can see into my bathroom back there too. Crap! My apartment! Ah! So cool. Like, and then I can do this. Here, check this out. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to do that. And now you guys can see my, uh, my stove. So I'm going to be like down over here cooking in pots and stuff. Oh my god, this setup is so cool. How's that working for everybody? How's that, how's that looking? Let's see, I need to figure out a way I can just set this up like over here and just like have it watch if I want like a second angle or something. Um, so I need a solution. So I'm going to leave you guys looking at like the ceiling for a little bit. And then I'll be right back. This is a big experiment. It's a crazy, I'm just, you know, crazy experimenting. Yeah, I've got some ingredients out here already, so you can see the beef, the macaroni, a couple bowls, some uh, spices and stuff. We got some cumin, some onion powder, some celery salt, cutting board. Yeah. Everything is good with sound? Y'all are hearing me okay? Just want to double check. Okay, I'm going to put you down and it's going to get dark for a second while I go find some sort of a propping solution. I think it's going to end up being books. Uh, okay. We've got How to Cook Everything Vegetarian and The Lord of the Rings. Put these right here. Let's see, this is out facing. Yeah, so what if I do that? Now you guys are looking at my beautiful face again. And I can put that here. Now you're seeing an awful lot of book like that. Maybe I don't need that book. I can just do that. It's beautiful. Yeah, great. Cool. Ah, so this is super fun. I'm super excited. How are you guys? Bent wire coat hangers are great stands. Hello, cross stays. Hello, black robe. Sound and video, sound is doubled. Sound is awesome? Is, is the sound doubled or is it awesome? Let me give this a try, also. Yeah. I'm just looking at like, how much an ambient noise I can have before my noise gate starts popping up. If I bring that down, is the sound still good? So that should cut down on some of the like background hum that you hear pretty often. Uh, my, my mobile phone is just a little bit slow. I'm using my Nexus 7 tablet. Um, cool. Yeah, the big cam does have crazy frame drops. That's because the big cam, I am casting from my tablet to the PC, and then I'm capturing a window on the PC, and that's what's coming through. Um, so every once in a while, like when the internet isn't quite doing so well, it's going to have some problems. If I use folded tape, I can make sure the tablet doesn't fall. True. I wonder if I have tape. I don't know. So hang on. First, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep emptying my dishwasher over here. So I'm just gonna do this. Whoa. Cool. So you guys will be able to see me just a little bit while I'm emptying the dishwasher, at least. This is super fun. I'm really excited about this, y'all. I'm super happy. Um, I'm gonna go over and just like fiddle with my computer setup a little bit. So y'all are going to see some funky stuff while I do that. That's okay. I'm right next to the microphone now. Let's chat. Is that it? Yeah, there we go. Pull that over. 
Oh look, Yeti. And now we're back, good. So let's, I'm just gonna like, compress that some, like bring that up, and then that up. Okay, excellent, that looks good. My setup, it is all done. Yeah, so I just want to empty the dishwasher because I want it nice and empty so that I can toss stuff in it as I need to. I'm going to toss some towels into the washing machine over here. Done. Um, that can come up here. My cold medicine will go in the bathroom. I'm gonna have a lot of fun with this, y'all. It's gonna be really fun. I think it's gonna be really fun for you too. At least I hope so. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh, oh. Look at that camera setup, it's so fun. I'm still a little bit sick, which is unfortunate. Don't prepare food for other people when you're sick, but I'm the only person who's gonna be eating this, so. Y'all are going to hear me crashing around the kitchen. Sorry in advance to anybody's headphones. Yep. I was trying to get all this done before we started the stream, but ha, huh, all of the like technical prep got in the way, so to speak. That's fine. Here's where I keep all of my Tupperware and my liquor. Speaking of which, it's a good reminder that it's important to uh, drink the right thing when you're cooking the right thing. So I'll probably bust out a um, one of my own brews. I brewed with Graham, who Inspector Beans knows. Got a bowl I'm putting away. This is where I keep my bowls up here and glasses. I'm going to keep that out. I'm going to put that right there. Work before pleasure. I have to finish the uh, have to finish the preparation before I can pour myself a drink and begin the cooking. That's okay because it gives uh, gives my friends a little bit more time to come in. Yep. Sorry. R. I. P. Ears. Sorry, y'all. Let's see. Hang on. I'm going to just take this, and then you guys are going to watch me tweet. Here we go. I'm all sniffly. Let's see. Tweet. Live now. On the menu which is a name I made up right now. On the menu. Beefy mac and cheese. With rock of flour. Twitch.tv slash Sound Osiris. We did. Beautiful. I'll put you down now. Okay. So, I have a few more things to pull out of the dishwasher, a few things to put into the dishwasher, and then we'll be ready to get started with the actual cooking. This up here. And some glasses. Oops. You fell down just like that person warned me you would. I'm sorry, chat. 
How can I ever repay you? Maybe by setting you back up again. I hope that's sufficient. It's all I have. All right, good. Okay. Um, let me think. I still need a couple of ingredients. I need the mascarpone. That out. I need the cheddar cheese. I'll put that out. I need milk. That a plenty. So cheeses, macaronis, milk, beef, spices, and I need the rock flour. Ta-da! Beautiful. So broccoli flour is like broccoli crossed with cauliflower. It's supposed to be really tasty and good for you, and I need to eat more vegetables, so that's what I'm gonna do. Dodgerade, oh my god! Is that even possible? L. Johnson 91, the nickname Silent Osiris is from my um, it's from my high school days when I was using AOL Instant Messenger. All right, so over here is no longer very interesting. We're going to move over in another way. Oh my god, look at that. There's someone rating me. That's amazing. I love it. Thank you, whoever is rating me. I'm super, super ridiculously flattered. Maybe I can put a salt shaker over here, and that'll help with the falling down issue. All right, cool. Let's get started. So we're going to cook um, beefy macaroni and cheese uh, with... I can do this. Oh my god. You're so short. Okay, so we're gonna cook beefy macaroni and cheese with rock flour. So first thing I'm gonna do is like brown some beef with some spices in it. Then I'm going to um, prepare the macaroni and cheese. So let me just get the recipe book. I'll show that off to you all over here. This is Mark Bittman's How to Cook Everything. I'm really excited about it. So um, this is supposedly one of the most popular recipes in the original How to Cook Everything, which Mark attributes to too many people growing up with what the Canadians call craft dinner. Sorry, Canadians. Um, the real thing is rich, filling, delicious, and dead easy. You can change the type of cheese you use. Try blue cheese, goat cheese, smoked gouda, or even mascarpone. Or mix in some crisp cooked chunks of thick cut bacon or pancetta, about a half a cup. I don't have that, but that sounds amazing. So. Ingredients, salt, milk, bay leaves. Oh, I need to grab some bay leaves. This is gonna be fun. I think I have some back here somewhere. Here, you guys get to see the inside of my, uh, you guys get to see all of my cooking setup. So here's my spice cupboard. It's not terribly well organized, but it is in fact organized by uh, alphabet. So generally the A's are over here. You can barely see the Cajun seasoning and the later letters are over here with the time, things like that. Um, so, we back. Let's see what I can find. I don't need to rummage, so I need both of my hands. Ah, there we go, bay leaves. Perfect, beautiful. So we've got bay leaves. Okay, we have one pound of elbow shell ziti, or other cut pasta, 375 grams. It's probably not quite a pound, but it's probably close to a pound. Bacon and alcohol. Absolutely, the, the strange guys. Okay, um, we need one and a half, no, three tablespoons of all-purpose flour, because we're gonna make a roux, that's really fun. Um, four tablespoons, uh, which is a half stick of butter. Okay, we can do that. Here we go. Um, yeah, so four tablespoons is half a stick. We're gonna take care of that, no problem. Put that right there. Uh, it, it calls for Parmesan cheese, but I don't have that. Uh, I'm using sharp cheddar cheese. That's gonna have a lot of flavor. Freshly ground black pepper. I've got that right here. Uh, the uh, you might notice the big camera is sometimes a little bit laggy. That's because I'm streaming from my tablet over to my PC and then capturing the window. So sorry if that is happening. Um, and then it calls for breadcrumbs, which I don't think I have, because I think I use them all. Um, and that's just to like create a nice crisp top. Sorry, y'all. 
Now they're gonna hear me bang around my kitchen a lot. And that's just part of the nature of cooking, unfortunately. Okay, so I'm gonna pull out this salt so we can use that. Okay, so right, we wanted to talk about having the right drink before we cook the right food, right? So here we go. Oh man, oh it's nice and cold too. This is a Belgian saison that I brewed with my friend Graham. Let's let's hear it. Are y'all ready? Oh yeah. Totally. Some explosive carbonization. So we've got our glass. We've got the slow motion the slow motion pour happening over here. I hope y'all are going to get to see some of this. Sometimes it seems like it does catch up every once in a while. I'm going to do my best to describe everything that I'm tasting tonight for you in explicit detail. So if food porn is a thing, this is going to be as hardcore as it gets. Um, who's asking? Land.tynzik. I am sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, Land.tynzik, but I would absolutely recommend How to Cook Everything for a Budding College Cook. It's very simple. Most of the recipes, um, like my criticism of How to Cook Everything would be that it's, it's just a little bit basic, um, but it's got tons of great stuff. It's super delicious. Okay, so smelling this, there's a very citrusy uh, scent coming off the top of it. There's obviously a lot of head on this beer, and I didn't even pour aggressively. Um, generally, our beers tend to be a little bit overcarbonated. So, yeah, it's 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 hoppy, but in a very citrusy way. Uh, the the best thing I could compare it to is like lemon zest and maybe some sort of herb. I wish I could tell you what kind of herb. I don't know. I'll practice. It's cold. It's got a great mouthfeel. Um, so like, you know how sometimes when you drink uh, a beer, there's, there's beers that are like um, Heineken, which are very, very watery, and they just feel like, almost like you're drinking water, um, just in terms of the feel of them on your tongue. And then there's beers like Guinness, which feel more like you're drinking chocolate milk at, in terms of the way it feels in your mouth. This is actually closer to Guinness. I'm thinking notes of apple, maybe, plus orange and wheat. It's definitely, um, it, the flavor approaches a wheat beer. On the whole, I'm super, super happy with this saison that Graham and I brewed. All right, so I'm gonna just refill this glass and then we'll get started cooking. So, first thing that we have to do. Now, this starts right off with the macaroni and cheese because it's just macaroni and cheese, but I need to start with the beef. So, I've got a pan here. I'm gonna open that up and start that warming up. I'm gonna turn the heat up to about seven or so. I'm gonna grab y'all and come on over. We'll take a look. Yeah, so you can just barely see here I have Oops, turned on the wrong burner. Excellent. Stop that. Second burner. So yeah, now we're over to about seven. I wonder if you guys can see that. It's pretty damn dark. That's okay. Uh, now we've got that pan on the heat, starting to warm up. Um, so while that's warming up, um, I want to try out some of these spices. Um, I found a, a recipe for Hemingway's burger, Hemingway's favorite burger, because um, he was apparently a burger fan, and it has all sorts of spices in it, but the burger itself just tastes incredible. It's got this rich protein umami flavor that just, um, like the flavor of the beef is almost richer than any other burger I've had. So I'm using some of those same spices in this just to give the beef a little bit of kick to help it going 
in the uh, in the mac and cheese. So let's give this a try. This is going to be funny. Y'all are going to like this. I'm going to grab a, a bowl here. I'm going to just put a little bit of spice into that. I'm going to like lick my finger and taste the spice. I'm going to describe for you what it tastes like. I hate these little spice packets. They're really annoying. Yeah, I, I do need to get some gas stove tops. Um, Tiberius 1403, I absolutely do. Is this is this Shokugeki, Shokugeki no Steven? I don't I don't know what Shokugeki no whatever is. I'm afraid I'm not an anime. I'm not anime experienced. Okay, so it definitely smells oniony. Uh, this is of course onion powder. So yeah, let's let's try this. All right, we got a little bit there on the end of my finger. Hmm. Oh wow. It's actually really sweet. Yeah, it's, it's, at first it's very sweet and then the onion flavor really kicks in. Um, it tastes more like the onions that you have on a McDonald's burger than anything else. Like it doesn't really taste like real onion, but it's not at all unpleasant. Uh, and then let's try the celery salt. Legend John is saying, please make this a regular thing. I'm already loving this. Let's see, I need to dump out the rest of this onion salt because, or onion powder, because I don't need that in there. Boop, boop, good. I'll try to dry that out. Um, who is that? Oh man, Kebalt Shuriken, I think. Cobalt Shuriken, am I really watching a guy make food on stream? You bet I am, I'm so glad. I can't tell you how excited I am to be doing this. I'm, I'm having so much fun, even already. I'm just checking how warm that pan is. Yeah, it is. It's warm, but it wouldn't burn you. Okay, so let's let's see the celery salt. Yep, just got a little bit of that in there. So celery salt is like often used in um, what are they called? Um, Bloody Caesars. Celery salt here. It's a dark brown, granular spice. Um, I think it's made by evaporating evaporating water that's had celery seeds in it. It's got an interesting smell. It almost smells like cooking carrots. Let's give it a try. So, once again, there's the proof right on my finger. Oh, man. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. Guys, that's incredible. Okay, I know what I know where I've had this before. I've had this all over crabs. If you've ever been to a crab boil, then um, sometimes like crabs will have this brown, crusty stuff all over them. That is that celery salt. It's just straight celery salt. That's like memories from childhood in a bowl right there. Wow, no wonder I like that so much. Okay, good. So we're gonna toss that, rinse it. Um, so we got about, uh, how many, how much, how many grams of beef is this? This is 664 grams, 0.6 kilos of ground beef, lean ground beef. Um, so I'm going to go with like a quarter of a tablespoon of each of these. A quarter of a teaspoon, tablespoon, no, half a teaspoon. Let me take a look. I'm going to just like eyeball it. So that's a quarter teaspoon right there compared to like my thumb. That, I feel like that would be a bunch of flavor. Oh, I wanted to put a little cumin in it too. So let's give that a shot. Here's the cumin. Oh yeah, Kiska, you think so? Yeah, here we go. We're gonna just like top, tap out a little bit of cumin in there. Okay. Um. <laughs> The funny thing about cumin is that I think it smells like B.O. But it tastes great. Okay, cumin on the finger. Here we go, straight in the mouth. Wow. I hope you all appreciate what I'm doing. Okay, wow, so there's like um, hints of chocolate and, and chili in there. Um, cumin is overpowering. The moment it touched my tongue, it was like an explosion of flavor in my mouth, and especially like straight up to my nose. 
that's that's what hit me is that um, it didn't just sort of hang out. It actually, like, the moment it touched my tongue, it was in my sinus cavity. It almost feels like if it were slightly different, then I would uh, I'd be able to have that wasabi reaction. Um, great flavor, though. Uh, interestingly, even though I think it smells like B.O., I don't think it tastes that way. Like, the flavor and the smell are very different. Hey, Kiska. Hey, baby. Come here. I'm going to give Kiska some treats. How about some Greenies Flavor Fusion Tooth Treats? Here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flip you guys around here. And we're going to feed treats to the cat. Here we are. Hi, sweetie. What's up? You want some treats? Come here. Here we go. Here's um, six treats for you. Come here, baby. Oh yeah, now she's gonna like really tackle those for a little while. She'll be pretty happy after that. She's uh, she's a loud one. Flip that back around and we'll get back to it. Okay. Cleanse my palate a little bit from those flavor blasts. Mm. <laughs> He's gonna cook the kitty! Snapdragon22, you didn't know what you were signing up for? Uh, I'm gonna blow my nose. So, preemptive apologies for that. I am still a little sick. I will at the very least mute myself so that y'all won't have to hear me blowing my nose. All right, we back. Good, so this is getting pretty warm. I'm gonna turn that down just a little bit because it's not quite ready yet. So, does that look like it's gonna fit all of that? I'm gonna get a bigger bowl. Uh, get ready for some clangs and bringing out a couple pieces of glassware. Uh, I've got a nice set of Pyrex bowls here. And I'm gonna use the big one Put the small one away. Ugh, sorry. Hurts my ears too. I'm suffering with you in solidarity. Okay, so um, I'm bringing out some sugar as well. This is icing sugar. I'm going to put a little bit of that in the beef because apparently it helps the beef sort of absorb flavors even better to have sugar in there with it. Now, here's a question. I'm going to try to lock my screen. And am I still casting? I am still casting. Lots of questions. How much to buy your cooked food from 3-Lip? <laughs> How high of a beef to cheese ratio will there be? There will be actually, um, by concrete uh, weight value, more beef than cheese. So that's awesome. I've, I, uh, I have successfully turned off my tablet screen, which means I'm saving battery power. Keys go, come here. Come here. Hey, quit whining. You got so much good food tonight. She got wet food already, and she got treats. That's not a usual evening. So here we go, ground beef into the bowl. I should try to be careful with raw meat just because it's raw meat, so I'm not going to taste raw meat. But I am going to cook just a little bit of it, and I'm going to taste that, and I'm going to describe that to you. So here we go. Let's grab a fork. I'm having so much fun. I hope you all are having fun. This is really fun. Yeah, here we go. We got a nice little piece of ground beef. I'm not going to eat this raw, Chad. I'm sorry. I'll slap that right here. Oops, it's all broken apart. Get, get back together, ground beef. What's wrong with you? He's got... Y'all are just gonna hear her meowing. She does this all the time. Basically, how she and I relate to each other is through her meowing at me a whole lot. So while that's just cooking up a little bit, I'm gonna toss a couple spices in here. So let's see, where did they all go? Here they are. 
This is why I hate these little boxes, because I can't just, like, stick this in here and scoop it out. Oh, uh, can I? Oh my god, I made it! Oh, uh, now I'm gonna pull it out and you're gonna see, like, poof, explosions of powder everywhere. Okay, so, onion powder. Good. Ah, uh, she's, she's found her toy. Now she's gonna toss a toy around loudly. I'll just turn this over a little bit. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's just a little bit of Maillard reaction on that heat there. Yeah. Okay, that's going to be done very shortly. I feel like uh, a quarter teaspoon is not enough because there's a lot of beef here. So, just tossing that on there. And then a little bit of cumin. Mod Pocket. Pocket's here. Hello, Pocket. I would mod you, except I can't reach my computer. I'm sorry. I would mod everybody. That I know, in real life. But I can't reach my computer. You'll have to forgive me. Okay, so time to get this up, because that's starting to smell delicious. Um, yeah, how about the second bowl? I did bring out a second bowl here. Okay, cool. So, here's what it looks like. All cooked up. Yeah. But there we go. It's just a couple little strands of ground beef. Toast the spices and herbs for extra flavor. Hmm. I could do that. So let's see what this is. What's this like? Oh my gosh. This is very challenging. I'm just gonna like go for it. That had raw beef on it. I'm dead. I'm dying of the disease. Okay. Hmm. It's a very savory flavor. Beef is. It's not very juicy, of course, because it's um, lean. But I, it almost like sucks the moisture out of my mouth to eat that. Um, but it's, it's got this sort of smoky taste to it. Have you ever noticed that? I don't know, that's what I'm getting right now. It's delicious. It's a little bit oily, like it feels like my mouth is coated just a little bit with an oil, which makes sense because there's animal fat in there. Yeah, it's delicious. It had a little bit of browning on the outside, just like, you know, where the, the meat reacted with the heat to brown. Mm. Wash that down with a little Belgian saison. Ah, and I wanted the sugar. Let's taste the sugar. Here we go. Straight in the pot. Sugar finger. Mmm. That tastes like sugar. Is what that tastes like. Um, it's not like honey. Honey is more floral. What else is it like? Sugar is a pretty basic flavor. Um, it's incredibly basic. It's almost like just pure sweetness and nothing else. Uh, okay, so now we've got this. Um, trying to trying to demonstrate that. Yeah, we've got this like brick of ground beef here with some spices on top. I'm just gonna break it up, stir it all in. I know he's got. Oh, we do this every evening, all evening. I'll be sitting there watching TV and she'll wander around chirping and I'll say, oh really? Oh, hmm. She's telling me about her day. It's nice, she has good days. Where do you get my octagonal glasses? Um, I don't actually even remember. I think I got them in North Carolina. It's been so long since I got new glasses. No, wait, I got them here. I got them from a place was it called For Your Eyes Only? There's a place on St. Catherine that I used to go to to get my eyes inspected, and I need to go again because it's been like two and a half years since I've gotten my eyes checked. I uh, haven't noticed any negative impacts, but would be nice to. Okay, so I've stirred this up. Maybe I can tell you what brand they are. Put that back on the heat. Mm, all of the branding has completely erased from these glasses because they are so freaking old. Uh, I think they're Dutch, Danish, 
Okay, so uh, another heaping of each of these spices, and then we'll mix it up and we'll be ready to go. Okay. Uh, poof. A little more poudre d'oignon biologique. Let's catch that light just a little bit. Linlin98. Lin I'm, uh, you know, actually, I, I, I missed work a little bit today. I took a half day, and it's because when I woke up, I was worse. But it was the kind of worse that kind of signals the end, you know? It's like, all of a sudden, everything has started to flow out of your sinuses. So you feel worse, but you know that it's not going to last for long. So tomorrow, I'm not going to take a half day. I'm going to be there for a full day, which is good, because I need to be there. Um, and I, I am very confident that I have cleared the hump, so to speak. Lin Lin 98. So thank you very much for your concern. All right, so just a little bit more spice there. And now we're gonna be able to taste how this tastes with the, um, with the spices mixed in instead of just on its own. I wonder if there's gonna be much difference. It always seems so surprising to me how little spice you need in order to uh, really make a big change in the flavor of whatever you're, you're eating. Um, I do want a little bit more sugar, which I put away, so good. Well done, Steven. Let's hear that beautiful opera voice while I cook. Yeah. I bet y'all wish. Okay. I'm talking. I'm having a nice conversation here with my friends in chat. Also, it's ridiculously awesome that we have nearly, uh, nearly 1,200 people in chat watching me cook this evening. That's fucking awesome. Thank you to everybody who's here. Thank you to everybody who rated me. I saw that earlier. I think that was Dodger who rated me. Um, if anybody's hosting me, I like my um, my chat is way over here. Ugh, I haven't even reached it yet, so I can't really see. I'm not keeping on top of what's going on, so I'm sorry if I'm missing things. Um, but sincere thanks to everybody for being here and for for being excited about this fun stream. I'm really I'm really happy this solution is totally working out as well as as it is. Okay, so we've, we've mixed it all up, got this going. Yeah, I think it's time, let's just toss it in. Time to brown some, uh, brown some beef. Okay, we're not gonna be using the um, fork anymore. Now I'm gonna pull this up. I'm just gonna flip around, show y'all what I'm working with here. Here we go. Gonna grab a spoon and just move this around a little bit. Hard to do this with only one hand, but this is what's happening off in the corners. Just breaking it up, making sure that it's divided into little clusters. While this is browning, I'm gonna start with um, the water for the macaroni. So, all right, leave that macaroni. The solution is a GoPro. Who said that? Tiberius 1403? Yeah, absolutely. The solution is a GoPro, and I need one if I'm going to do this on a regular basis, which I would love to. Okay, so I filled that up about three quarters full with water. I'm going to let you all take a look at that. Here we go. I feel like I need more light over here. I need like some lights. Yeah, so that's about, that's about how far down it goes. I'm I'm just touching the water now. Yeah. There we go. Cool. So, stir this around a little bit. Turn this up to high. That's on mass. So, what we're going to do next is we're going to um, we're going to boil the macaroni, but not to completion. Will not be satisfied with macaronis because we are going to cook them. This is baked macaroni and cheese, so we're going to put them in a bowl, smother them in delicious cheese sauce, which we should probably also start prepping, and then go on.
more light on the cooking area for next time. The thing is, interestingly enough, there is literally nothing I can do to get more light on the cooking area. Unless, well, I wonder. I'm going to toss some salt here into the, uh, oh, you know what we have to do. Uh, mm. Salt time. Mmm. Bam. I've never actually done this before. I don't do this for my normal cooking for myself. Um, that almost makes me salivate more. Even though salt is supposed to be a desiccant? Well, I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Um, powerfully overwhelming. Um, you know, like the ocean, of course, though the ocean has other flavors mixed in, right? The ocean tastes a little bit like seaweed and animal, <laughs> but this is just pure ocean flavor, straight to your brain. Mm. Everyone throw out your PJ salts, let's go. You know what, I'm gonna see if I can do something real quick. Let me get out my little step ladder and see if I can adjust the position of one of these lights to shine more directly onto the cooking area. Oh. So, chat, if I fall and die here today, call somebody and tell them to turn off my oven. I wonder if y'all can even see me right now. So, what do we have? Oh, 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 oh. Oh, look at that. Oh, I can turn it right down onto the stove. So that's definitely brighter down there than it was before. I'm going to show you all the difference. That's all I can do here for today. Well, I could turn the other one onto it. Here, let's take a look. Look. Is that any brighter? Uh, it's brighter, but it's not quite as bright. I'd love to take that second light up there and turn it to the same position. I'm gonna give that a shot. We're in a nice spot right now with the cooking because this just stuff sort of browning and whatever. Things are just getting hot. That's all it's doing. I'm gonna stir this up a little bit, make sure we brown this evenly. I could turn the heat up a bit. It's a little bit low. It smells delicious. It smells like that same beefy smell, but richer. Okay, here I come. Up the ladder. If I die, tell my mom I loved her. Okay, there's a second set of lights. Very hot lights pointing at the, the stove. Okay. I think that's basically, that's the best we can do, literally. Uh, until I like buy a lighting array or something like that, I cannot do anything more. But, here's what it looks like now. Now I think that is a lot better. So, I'm happy to have done that. That works. That works well. Love it! Butt cam! General Mittens! That one's for you, buddy. Okay. So y'all can even see, I'll bring you back over, y'all can even see, like, this, this lean beef is starting to release its fats. And they're just congealing, or not congealing, but pooling around the edges. Oh, man. Mm. Oh, that smells good. Here, let's, we're gonna take a smell. Around we go. Here we come. Are you ready? Here we go. Are you ready? Oh man, do you smell that? It smells like every beef dish you've ever had cooked. It doesn't smell overwhelmingly of cumin. It doesn't smell overwhelmingly of any of the spices that we're using. Interestingly enough, you're seeing these burners as purple because of some strange trick of the camera here. I see them as red. They're, they're red burners. So that's very interesting. Ah, they are. It's smelling delicious, chat. I, I'm super excited. Did y'all see that? Uh, that fat bubbling away down there. That's good. That is some good stuff. Okay, so time to put away the ladder so I have clear space in my kitchen. Wow, it feels really bright in here. That's amazing. Okay, good, ladder is cleared away. 
beef is browning. I'm making this because I'm a skinny dude. You can see how skinny I am. Um, and I'm trying to bulk up just a little bit, so like, this isn't necessarily the most healthiest of meals ever, but you know, it's all homemade. I'm using whole wheat pasta. I'm using good ingredients. So it's not that bad. Okay, so one thing that we haven't done, we're supposed to keep the oven to 400, so let's get that done. 400, done. We got a little bit ahead of ourselves. Heat the milk and the bay leaves. Oh, y'all are gonna like this. Heat the milk and the bay leaves in a small saucepan over medium low heat. So I need two and a half cups of milk. It says low fat is fine, but I don't have low fat milk because I'm a fatty. I only have high fat milk. This is lactensia. Pure filtre. Gomad. Uh, I have looked into Gomad and I think drinking a gallon of milk every day sounds disgusting and like something I cannot physically do. So, thank you for the suggestion though, thank you. I appreciate your care. But, but, uh, full fat milk, uh. So I need two and a half cups of this. Let's taste the milk. Here we go. So for those of you who don't drink full fat milk, you are missing out. It tastes like butter and cream and everything good you've ever had in dairy form. It's, it's amazing. I've been making cakes. Cakes is what I've been making. 3.25% is the fat content of whole milk. It's 3.25% fat. Um, whole milk is incredibly creamy. It's got that thick mouth feel that um, like skim milk just doesn't have. Skim milk, to me, when I drink it, it, it tastes like I'm drinking water. Um, whereas when I drink whole milk, I know I'm drinking milk. It's creamy, it's rich, it's fantastic. So. I just turned off the heat on the, the beef because it's mostly brown. There's still a little bit of uh, undercooked portions in it. That's fine because this is all going to go into the oven and cook for how long? 20 minutes? 15 to 20 minutes. So let's see here. Pouring in the first two cups of milk and then I need another half cup. Okay, that's good. And a half a cup is there. Two and a half? Yes. Okay, there we go. So, here's the, here's the fun part. I've got these bay leaves, right? And you know the drill, you know the drill, chat. There's only one rule, which is that I have to taste all of the ingredients as I'm going. So, let's try it. I've got, I've got just a little bit of bay leaf here. I'm just gonna like suck on it because I don't wanna eat this, it's a leaf. And you don't eat it, you just use it for the flavor. Hmm. It's very subtle. The best way I could describe it is like a tree. It just tastes like a tree. And cinnamon. Actually, it tastes a little bit like a tree crossed with a cinnamon. There's no spice to it. It's not a spicy thing. Um. Yeah, interesting. Okay, well, we need two bay leaves, so there we go. Got them. Straight in the milk. And that needs to start getting warm. So the instruction here is heat the milk with the bay leaves in a small saucepan over medium to low heat. When small bubbles form, so medium to low, uh, when, uh, when small bubbles appear along the sides about five minutes later, turn off the heat and let it stand. Cook the pasta in the boiling water over here to the point where you would still think it needed another minute or two to become tender. Drain it, rinse it quickly to stop the cooking, and put it in a large bowl. Okay, so we're gonna need something to drain the pasta with, because this water is close to boiling. Fortunately, I've got a nice set of interlocking bowls. I'm gonna grab the strainer here, and I'm gonna grab the big bowl, and that's what I'm gonna put all of the ingredients into until we're ready to use them. So. Starting to run out of space here on the counter. 
That's fine. I'm going to put this up here and this in the sink. Done. These suckers are going to go right back down here. So let's take a look at what we're working with over here with beef. I'm going to try some of this right in front of you. Boop. Here we go. Here's the beef. Mostly fully cooked. You can see just a little bit of pink right down here. So it's not completely cooked. That's okay. Um, let's take a let's take a sample. Where's my fork? It's over here. I'm gonna rinse it free of the beef. Free the beef. Yeah, let's give this a try. Hmm. Hello, Chad. How are you today? I'm really happy you're here. What? Oh my gosh. There we go. So here's a little bit of beef dripping those fats. Oh, it just smells so rich. It smells much more rich than the previous beef that I ate. That was just, uh, that was just the straight beef. Mmm. That's good. It tastes a little bit Mexican because of the cumin. It's really, um, it's pronounced how, how easily cumin causes a food to taste Mexican to me. It's delicious though. It's really fantastic. That's good. I'm I'm looking forward to eating that. Hi Kiska. Kiska's just hopping up on a uh, hopping up on a chair, meowing at me. So I'm gonna take all this and I'm gonna put it right into this bowl, which I promise you is below the thing. Um, there's not really any way to filter out the uh, fat, unfortunately, which is fine. So now there's a whole lot of beef and fat. In a bowl. Oh, put this in the sink. Ready to be clean. So, yes. Okay, so we've got this. We've got this milk and bay leaves. I'm gonna just sink the bay leaves in the milk a little bit. We've got some boiling water, waiting for some pasta. He's got. It. I know. Hey, let me come see you. How you doing? Everybody hears you, but nobody can see you. It's very sad. Hey, what you doing? She ran away from me a little bit. She's, she's a little bit happy now that I'm petting her. She's gonna lie down on the chair. Oh yeah. Starting to purr some, squinting her eyes, petting her on the chin, and I'm coming back. All right, so oven's warming up. Um, milk and bay leaves are heating, water is boiling. Let's do this, let's do this pasta thing. So, oh my God, chat. You see this? I do this for you. I do this for you, chat. There's no flavor there. There's just pain and sadness. Oh, you guys might see a kiska. Come here. Come here. Come on. Yeah, I need a GoPro for kiska. Um, you know what? Now that now that it's mostly gone, this is whole wheat pasta, so it's got a real nutty flavor. Um. Almonds or walnuts, maybe? Maybe beech nuts? It smells like cardboard because it's in a cardboard box. Okay, um, so I'm gonna just check out how many pounds 375 grams is. Eeks, I know. You're shouting right in the mic. Oh yeah, 375 grams G N L B S. 0.82 pounds, so I need like another, I need like another 100 grams, so I'll do one packet and a quarter, and that's going to do it for us. Cool. Hey, the oven is ready. So you go in, stir that around so that nothing sticks to the bottom too bad, and then second pack. This will be there. 
done. Okay, so um, when cooking pasta, it's best not to like just time it, but to sample it every once in a while and try to see how firm it is. You're going for al dente, which means to the teeth. It's a, a firm pasta that you can bite into and actually feel it resist just a little bit. But we're not looking for al dente, we're looking for slightly firmer than al dente. So maybe even just a little bit of crunch. So we're gonna bake this after it's done. Stir around this milk, make sure that it's not uh, heating too high. Splash some water on the floor. Everything's good. Okay, let's uh, let's take a look over here. I'm gonna let y'all see what I'm working with. On the stove top, flip. Yeah, so here we've got that, that bay leaves and that milk. You can maybe see a little bit of steam rising off of it. I don't know if you guys can, I can. Now here, of course, is the boiling water. Obviously, you can see the steam coming off of that. No problem. Stir that around, make sure nothing's stuck on the bottom. Every once in a while, noodles do tend to get stuck on the bottom of boiling pots. So what we've got over here, we've got mascarpone, which is the cheese that's used in all sorts of desserts, like, um, uh, what is it, what are they called? They're like little tubular desserts with white cheese filling in them. Um, and of course we've got like really sharp cheddar cheese here. I like a sharp cheddar. It's got a lot more flavor. Okay, I'll flip that back around and put you down. I need to like, I need to put some, some masking tape on the floor and like mark out my spot when I'm like center frame for y'all. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Alright, cool. Shutting down that screen, save all the battery. We're, I'm doing great on battery over here, it's fantastic. Oh crap, was anybody watching how long this has been in? Okay, we've got one. Uh, it looks barely cooked at all, but I'm gonna eat it anyway. I'm gonna eat it for you, chat. Oh, it's hot. Hey, these are done. I might let them go just a little bit longer, but these are basically ready to get poured out and drained. Ah, I see little tiny bubbles on the edge of the milk. Oh, okay, that's what we were told to look for. I'm gonna show you all that, and then we're gonna drain the, uh, we're gonna drain the macaroni. Turn that around. Maybe, maybe you guys can see just on the very edge there, Maybe you can see some tiny little bubbles. That's what Mark Bittman said to look for. So I trust him. He's done, he's done me right for quite a while. So, whoops, I always open the wrong drawer when I'm looking for my oven mitts. Here we are. I'm glad you're out of the way, chat. I wouldn't want to pour boiling water over you. Okay, and we want to rinse it right away with cold water so it stops the cooking process. That's what he said. So, that's what we're doing right over here. I'm gonna punch that so I get a wider spread. Yeah, let's see, how's it going? Good, I'm not burning the shit out of my hand. That's safe. Whew. There are still some hot spots in there. Have I washed my hands before this? Of course I have. And so should you. Excellent. So that's pretty cool. Let me put that down. How am I in frame here? That's good. Perfect. Turn off that. All right, so. Things are going well. Things are advancing swiftly, and I like it. I need to blow my nose, so I'm gonna mute you for a second while I go blow it. Okay, you know what time it is?
Time for more beer. Pour that. Let's see, maybe I can pour it enough so that you can see the color. You see that? Oops. This is challenging. I'm trying to get the right angle here. There we go. Yeah. It's got like a nice golden color. It's delicious. Now, this is live beer. It's what we call on lees or sur lee. You can maybe even see in the very bottom of the bottle. You can see that caked stuff. That's live yeast. That's just hanging out there. And I don't want to drink it, and if you do, it can actually cause intestinal problems because it's more biological stuff than your body's used to, you know, all sorts of little complaints. Okay, well, this milk is really, like, well and truly toasty, so I'm going to pull that, those bay leaves out. And then I'm going to try the milk because I don't know what the milk tastes like with now that the bay leaves have been steeped in it. And I want to know. I want to see if I can taste the, the bay leaf flavor in the milk. Let me move this out of the way. Uh, I'm going to need a little spoon. Here we go. Okay. Here we have just a little bit of bay leaf milk in a spoon. Where, where am I on camera? There I am. Ah. Trying not to burn the shit out of my mouth. Mmm. Yeah, that's a really different flavor. Still tastes very creamy, very rich. Um, there's a hint of the tree flavor from earlier, but really, it's... God, how could I describe that? That's a challenge. This is a GMing challenge. Um, it tastes almost like there's maybe just a little bit of a hint of a bitter undertone. Some sort of nutty flavor. It tastes like fall to me. That's really challenging. I'm going to have to try that. Okay, so here we've got our milk. The bottom of this pan is starting to feel a little slick. I think all the fats in the milk are starting to stick to it. We don't necessarily want that, but it's not that bad. It just means it's time to move on. It's a small saucepan over medium low heat. Yeah, when small bubbles turn off the heat and let it stand. Okay, heat is off. In a small saucepan, melt three tablespoons of the butter, then add the flour and cook, stirring until the mixture browns. Here we go, we're gonna make a roux. Oh, where's my little saucepan? That's the question. Do I have it? Oops, smash, smash, smash. I don't think I do. Damn. Okay, improvisation time. We're gonna use the big pan, which is not what we should be doing, but that's okay. All right. Big pan here, and then half a stick of butter looking good okay so this is four tablespoons of butter and three tablespoons of flour is what we're using yeah not bad okay down that goes oh he's got oh you know what we have to do chat we have to try the butter here we go what does butter taste like? Let's find out. This is cultured butter, unsalted. It tastes clean. Again, it's got that oily sort of coating nature, of course, because it's an oil. Um, it tastes like milk, but much richer, much stronger milk flavor. Tastes like cookies. Mm hmm. Kiska got fed. She's been fed 
She, I'm transitioning to her, her to a new dry food. She loves it. She's a fatty. She got some wet food this evening. She got some dry food. I gave her some treats earlier. She is a well-fed cat. She's just jealous that I'm hanging out with you all instead of her. All right, let's see. Um, I'm gonna set that aside, take it off the burner. This is melting good. So when the butter is foamy, add the flour and cook, stirring until the mixture browns about five minutes. Yeah, cool. So what we're gonna do is we're going to remove the bay leaves from the milk and add about a quarter cup of the milk to the hot flour mixture, one quarter cup at a time, um, so that it's, uh, it's, it, it thickens. Oh, I've actually made a mistake because I'm making a variant recipe. I'm making the rich macaroni and cheese recipe. I'm supposed to omit the roux and use um, mascarpone instead of the grated cheddar. So I'm just gonna put the mascarpone away and we'll just do the grated cheddar. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Here, let's take a look at what this looks like. Turn that around. Here's the butter in the pan. Not foamy yet. I don't know if y'all can tell, it's still melting. Got that set about halfway up. I wonder if y'all can see that too well. Uh, here's the milk, quite foamy. Yeah, let's see what people are saying over here. But she wants the human food that she's smelling, doesn't she? Kiska, look, she's washing herself. She's saying hi. Uh, 